This is the Toyota uh, DIY H4 kit in all its glory. We got shrouds, projectors, all the wiring. Here are my front halos. Uh, we're gonna put this all together. Let's go. First thing you're gonna do is these marker lights. This is a 10 millimeter. And then you're gonna try and pull it straight back. Since so we have a 10 mil here, two right here, and then 10 mil here to get this trim piece out of the way. Right down there. There we have it. Those are our four pieces that we need to take out. 225 for about 20 minutes. We'll do it. I use this little chisel. Just separate the glue all around here. Again, 225 for about 20 minutes. And that totally does it. Uh, so in order to get this orange little marker thing out, it's just one screw that comes straight out of there. Now it's time to start painting stuff, uh, including my shrouds. Uh, for these headlights, I'm finding I'm doing about 235. Uh, you gotta go at least 30 minutes. You kinda just gotta take this and look, wiggle it out of there. Um, it mounts onto these uh, tab corners right there. Just kinda wiggle it out, it should come out. Don't forget to spray paint um, this part. It just comes out, there's a screw right here, and then you're gonna pop it out. Uh, it might be stuck to the glue a little bit there, but yeah, paint this piece as well. So we got everything painted and clear coated. What I'm doing is I'm test fitting my housings, my projectors, and my shrouds. So like, for example, uh, without putting any of the nuts in, I mount the housing, and then you'll put the projector in projector in but the projector comes also with these little washers these washers fit in the back of the headlight housing like that and you'll screw that nut onto it and so they'll sit up straight in the housing and you want them fan side down okay so the fan faces down and then from there uh, you can shine them and see that they're level and then once they're level um, then what I like to do is test fit the shroud. So the shroud, uh, pretty clearly you can see three, see three notches, two on the top, one on the bottom. Those are, uh, what you'll match the shroud to on the housing with these flat sides, the bottom and the top. Um, but you'll notice one that I'm using to line up my R50. This goes on the bottom, this pointy one. I'm using that. That goes on the bottom like that. And then there's two flatter ones down here and over here. And those will fit on our one, two, three uh, notches. And so I test fit that. And what I noticed, at least the way I had it sitting, is that this lower edge right here, uh, it rubs up against the housing just ever so slightly so that it feels like it's gonna pop off. Um, you can see those are the paint scrubs um, from fitting that housing on there. So I took a file to it and just bezeled the corners a little bit and now it fits on perfectly. Once you've made sure, you know, they're gonna sit level, the shrouds are gonna fit the way you want it, um, you're going to want to silicone uh, everything on. Here I've got this all set up. So I put silicone on the three notches on the shroud to the housing. And I put silicone all around here. And that's Halo. Uh, the silicone, there will be a link in the description to that. Um, but yeah, so the shroud gets a little cut. That helps you fit those wires down. Wires come out the back here. This is more on the testing process of these lights. Uh, so you can see I've got them all hooked up. I've got the shroud popped on. I've got the wires coming out here. So uh, you'll see this is the LED driver. So this is a separate piece. This is a separate piece and it screws on to what comes off the projector. And I'm just wiring it. A great 12 volt source uh, is this drill battery. Positive, negative. That powers are great. And then you're just setting a level to that and making sure it sits just right. And then you're popping the shroud on and making sure it clearances. My left side one actually, uh, it's not rubbing the paint at all. So it's just the one on the right need a little bit of a bezel. But 
Look at that light pattern. We've got both lights all siliconed up. Uh, it's, this one's turning out great too. So now we have to let them sit for about 24 hours. How long they have to cure before you can bake them. Uh, here's the silicone that I'm using. All purpose silicone, you want the clear stuff, waterproof. Wiring, we have to find a uh, anytime uh, power source. If we look on my fuse box here, we've got air conditioning right there. Um, and that actually is going to provide us with an anytime power source right here and right here. And I'm going to opt for this one as my anytime power source for my DRLs, which means just a small, like, little 18, 20 gauge amp wire stuck in there. Put the relay back on, we're good to go. Um, in order to get that relay off, you got to pop on the lever right here. You gotta pop that, you push it all the way in, and then you can pull up on the blue part. And that'll come out, the blue and the white part will come out partially, and it'll look like this. Up there, uh, plugged in. Gonna have to put some electrical tape on it just to help waterproof it a little bit, but you also have to strip that pretty long. You want the copper to be what gets pinched down there, uh, the wire snapped. I mean, if you're wondering how I tested it, it's pretty simple, multimeter. Hook that up to a known ground point, in this case, right here, I know grounds, and then run my positive lead on my voltmeter out to my test wire here, and you just check the car um, in all positions, so in this case, I had to cycle the air conditioning through, make sure everything on the air conditioning relay, this was a constant power source. Um, I initially had a different relay on here that was transfer case, and it actually only worked in park, and that would have been a real bummer if my DRLs turned off as soon as I got out of park. So you want a multimeter, you want to know a bit of what you're doing, but it's pretty simple um, overall. Okay, so now we're gonna actually put the headlight together and get it ready for baking, which means we need this rubber uh, grommet type deal. And then we're gonna run my LED wire out around it. We're gonna use our washer setup and run it out through the uh, headlight. We're gonna check on the vehicle and make sure it's level and then it's gonna be time to bake okay, it. So a few things to make them fit. You'll see I cut a notch there, right there. Uh, that allows the LED wire to fit in better. And I also drilled a tiny, you wanna drill a small hole and you just wanna pull this LED halo wire through the grommet. And that's what I've done on this one as well. Okay, so we got the light test mounted and we're just checking to see how level that is. I got my level right here, solid block of wood. Um, and that's pretty level. Okay, let's talk a little bit about BX Built's uh, wiring setup here. So you have, uh, this is what I understand to be basis control module. Uh, it's, it's all the logic behind the way that these headlight retrofits work. So this uh, module runs one power wire you have to run that to the battery and then everything else that comes off that module there's a short side that will go to your headlight on the battery side and then there is a long set of wires that comes off of this that I have routed um, down through here that right there long side will go to your not battery side headlight um, and then each so there's one H4 plug. So you'll see there's an H4 plug down there, the blue and white wires. Uh, there's a tiny little other plug. And then that big black box, that's the headlight driver. That's the one that goes directly into the projector. Um, but yeah, and then you can see that yellow wire is my tap into the turn signal relay so that I can run my halos. And then I've got it zip tied right here. This goes right to the halos, and this is your DLR, DRL circuitry. So you'll have your amber positive signal, your white positive signal, and your ground. You gotta run all your own ground. You gotta tap all your own wires. Uh, I have the same deal on this side, headlight driver. Uh, that's a better look at the DRL driver. Uh, same small little plug, same wire tap, uh, but no H4 plug on this side. So you only plug in the H4 module on one side, and I'm guessing that the controller 
takes care of it from there. So for the DRL function on my lights, I have a relay that I've mounted right here to my battery mount. Uh, this relay, it draws power from, this pulls power, this wire pulls power from a relay in here. Uh, my air conditioning relay, the air conditioning comes on anytime that the key is in the accessory or the car is running. So that is a good power source for my DRL. Um, and then obviously we just pull that through a negative and then we pull power from the battery through here and then actually out into my halos but yeah that's the overall way that i've decided to set up my wiring obviously you can set it up just about however you want um especially on the drl and the switchback setup on the halos that do it however you want you know obviously his module is super well done uh the nice thing about his module is everything that comes off that blue controller box is a plug and everything that comes off the headlights and halos is also a plug. So you tap wires a lot and you tap your own, you put your own grounds in, but you end up with a plug and play headlight assembly. So for example, I'm gonna end up putting new lenses on. These are my old foggy lenses. I'm gonna put new ones on. All I have to do is unplug some stuff back here and I can take out this headlight assembly and that is awesome. That is part of why this kit is killer is because even though it's a DIY kit you end up with a perfectly plug-and-play solution after you've done all the work which is awesome that is I cannot overstate how awesome that is compared to a janky setup where you're tapping wires here and there and everything's just stuck together you'd have to break apart all your wiring uh, just to get a headlight out none of that BX built makes a great kit uh, and depending on the application in order to get your turn signals your uh, halo switchbacks LED switchbacks to not hyper flash. You need to change out your flasher relay. Um, this is kind of what the plug looks like on the R50. This is an aftermarket one. Put a link in the description for you. This is just a flasher relay. And that tucks up into the dash under the steering column is where you will find it on the R50. Um, but yeah, you'll need to change that with an LED compatible one just so that you don't get hyper flash on those turn signals.